exceptional effort, mind and body. Today we're talking about how to be inspired in your daily life, how to keep your brain sharp. And we're going to cover a number of different things from smells to how you keep your mental sharpness and how to just stay in that positive mode. So from your perspective, I mean, what are some of the first things you can do? I mean, we talked about, I mentioned smell there. I mean, smell is probably something that people don't often think about. How important is smell to staying sharp? Well, I mean, from a personal standpoint, I think it's huge. I mean, I love like this time of the year when I'm when I'm out riding my bike, for example, and I'm going through like all of the orchards and vineyards and everything, mm. like the diversity of smells like that are very sweet. I like very sweet smells, kind of fruity. And then also too, like more of like the fluorescent smells. Um, you can literally smell everything like so like it's like i can pass by you know like a, like peach trees and i can you know the smell of fresh peaches is like second to none for me like it's it's super sweet it's just like i don't know there's something about it that's just really refreshing and then on top of it when i sense that smell typically that comes with a nice cool breeze that helps to bring because of all the the watering it's like i know that i can expect shade and i can expect like a whole slew of like co like levels of comfort you know when amidst that i don't think i've ever smelled a peach tree it's incredible you, yeah, you if you like sweet amazing. smells it's it smell they smell incredible we had peach trees growing up and and yeah that beautiful smell when as they're, as they're growing and the, mm -hmm. the peaches are ripening and um, even the ones that fall off as they just fall off and oh, yes. before they start going rot and you, you get that fresh smell it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful um, awakening I agree completely fresh air outside people think how can I motivate my employees etc with uh, money cars and all these expensive things uh, you know uh, sending them to the gym to stay fit but it's the most simple things that keep people happy and sharp, mental sharp at work, which is like, a, you know, just um, enough light, you know, daylight instead of this uh, white, uh, not um, uh, yeah. just white light, but just real daylight. But also fresh air. Fresh air is essential for our brain. You know, the oxygen, we need oxygen to, to think clearly. And I think, you know, if you are able to have a break regularly, that's essential. To, to stay mentally sharp and to, to stay uh, well happy, of course, because our brain needs oxygen to, to function properly and being happy is part of it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think there's um, there have probably been studies done on this, but I, I feel almost instinctively that if our senses are not stimulated, you know, if we're not hearing and seeing and feeling and smelling, diverse things that we're we're not maximizing our human potential and i think we stifle ourselves and we can actually dull our our thinking and feeling you know because we're not taking in what we were meant to on a daily basis absolutely well, i'm gonna thing. agree with you on that like i think that if you look at i mean for example like when you ha when you see animals that are in like you know they've done like obviously a number of studies like with animals that are you know encased in like cages and stuff and like mm. when you're limited you know you almost have a tendency to kind of just give up and you kind of settle for you know what it is that the circumstance provides and so like right. that kind yeah. of feeling that sense of being in like this sounds weird but this sense of being in like a prison i don't want him mm. i can never imagine you know being forced into a situation like that where you know i've got like you know walls with no windows and no light and not yeah. being able to see what's going on around me and it's almost like like you said you kind of you limit I th i'm right there with you i think you limit human potential and i think at the same time too you just become almost like numb like you're like you know what's and then that's when you start questioning you know what's your purpose is and what you know it is that you know like your intent is or what you're designed to do like i just think like it's yeah i think you hit some you know hit something pretty big there and you know i mean that hits me like i could never work in a workspace that's limited to solely you know being stuck in a small area let alone in an area with yeah. nothing no that can stimulation be but it's it's interesting i know it could sound a little extreme to draw that connection but in a sense there really are connections to be drawn there. It's just that 
it's not so obvious to us. So if you said to somebody, I'm going to put you in solitary confinement in a room with no sounds or smells or sights or anything and see how you feel, most of us would feel immediately claustrophobic and, and worried about yep. that. We don't want that. We know that sounds bad. And yet our red flags don't come up when we are spending all day every day in the same room with no windows, no fresh air, no yep. nature, you know. Uh, we accept that and it's kind of more insidious and uh, we'll get the same negative effects without realizing the environment we've created for ourselves. It's interesting that you mentioned sol solitary confinement because when um, you know, Stephen was talking it was something I was going to bring up because uh, as a form of torture, solitary mm -hmm. confinement in a prison is, is one of the worst things that you could do to another person. I say, and that's right. by the way they, they did that was they isolated a person and it was, it was a it was not a painful, obviously physically painful, but from a mental perspective, it, it's yeah. a, when someone is isolated for a long period of time, they really, really suffer. And, and it's, that's why it is so important to get out, to get that, again, that mental sharpness by being around, not just you know mm -hmm. in, uh, outside, but also being around other people helps create yeah. that sharpness as well, that, that sense of being alive. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we can kind of shut ourselves down to function on a lower and lower level with that d um, deprivation, then can we reverse engineer that with uh, choosing our environments and adding sensory interest and stimulation and maximize our potential? And what does that look like? I know I have a few things that I try to do when I'm working in, and aromatherapy is a part of that actually. Well, that's interesting. I mean, Coming to that smell aspect, one of the things with smell in your mind is that the the smell sense actually bypasses the filter capacity of your brain. This is why you know sometimes when you you get a smell and it will remind you of something years ago, and you get a very very vivid memory. It's because smell yeah. actually bypasses the ability of your brain to filter that over time, and that's why it draws back. But you can use that to your advantage by when you have those. You, when you're aware of those kind of smells that that inspire you, you can actually then go, oh, that like it might be lavender or, or whatever it is. A particular, it might be peaches, as we were talking about before. Um, you know, I know from my perspective, when I smell peaches, it reminds me of when I was a child, and that inspires me. So you can actually, use, as you were saying, Heather, you can use that as a proactive way to to keep yourself sharp or to bring yourself back to sharpness if you're feeling a bit down. Yeah, it almost gives you like a sense of feeling like you're at home too. So like for you, like, you know, obviously for as the old saying goes, home is where the heart is. And so when you have little things that, you know, you have that are around you that represent, you know, things that are very valuable to you, you tend to reflect on those things a lot more. And actually that's something I need to do um, given, you know, that I'm moving from one familiar place or to a familiar place to a slightly unfamiliar place, you know, I'm going to have some things that help to remind me, you know, of those times that I had had, you know, when I was in the location that I was in. So it's, you know, having those little, like, like you had said, Damien, those little things that just help to trigger, you know, the positive thoughts, you know, especially from the past that you can then bring into the present to create more positive thoughts is huge. So... We touched on this a bit before too with plants and that's so much a part of building your environment, right? So I'm thinking of um, ways to decrease anxiety and stress and worry and one of those is to make your environment visually beautiful so you're happy when you look around and you, you like where you're sitting, you like what you're seeing and plants is... Um, Plants are a useful way to do that. This is a fake plant behind me, but even this makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people, they put pictures of their family on their desk. Mm -hmm. you know? Also yeah. a way of uh, feeling more comfortable. Like uh, not everyone needs this kind of uh, things, but there are people who like to be surrounded with, the, with pictures. Yeah. So and yeah, those pictures and paying attention to colors as well. And you would know this, Heather, from being a nurse that you know, there was a period now well now they actually you know the the gowns that are worn are uh, either a blue or a green because it has a calming effect the same token you can use that i mean i have in uh, in my house 
a, a green room effectively. It's got a green wall that I do green screen filming against. And that room, I notice when I walk in there with the green, it actually feel that little bit calmer going in. Mm. It's the same token too, from a vibrancy perspective, you can use the alternative. Uh, in a previous house that I had, in one of the rooms, I painted a feature wall that was was red. It was a not a, a very bright red, but it was a reddish color. And when you're in that room, you actually felt a little bit more energetic uh, because of you know how the mm -hmm. the effect of color that has on your on your um, alertness as well. So mm -hmm. very interesting. interesting because the next room was green, had a green wall as well. So you go from one to the other. So you go like Christmas. Really excited and then relax. Really excited and relaxed. <laughs> Yeah. Very interesting. I read a study about it that in England they wanted to change the lights in the classrooms when the kids were becoming less um, concentrated. They would switch the color of the light to to keep them um, more interested uh, again. Yeah, well, no, no, yes. and they do that. Like my computer is set with a because I use an Apple computer and it has a, a, a timer where in the evening it'll actually switch from a, a, a whiter light, which you're talking about, enemy, to a, a more um, a sort of a reddish, reddish not right, but a yellowy light, which is actually more relaxing. Which is probably maybe why I might fall asleep during this because it's you know it's morning for me here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, mine as well. <laughs> But yes, and that has a big impact. What you're talking about, enemy, they do change the, the light globes to emit a different type of light. Um, and a fluoro, which you don't get them so much anymore because we've got LED lights, but fluoro lights, the, the, the way that light vibrates actually makes you more sleepier. So that's a word, sleepier. Yeah. And then going back to um, enemy too, like I, I like how you like have that on um, the skylight, like the sky, um, Oh my goodness, the the window in the back, like the sky window. I don't know, I can't remember what they call them. Like it's not coming to my brain right now. Helix. Brain. We call it the helix here. Oh, cool. Yeah, no. They, anyways, I was gonna say that's like I, I love those. Like I wish that you know at least in some place down the road when I do have my own house, you know, I intend to have at least you know one or two of those just because like they're you know being able to visibly see the sky from them. It's it's it, there's something about it. It's, I don't know, it's, I, I like it. Like it, it brings a lot of positive and a, a lot of positivity and a lot of comfort. Yeah, so just going back to the whole idea of having light, like natural light, I should yeah. be clear on that, like natural light. It changes the, uh, the energy and the mood of a room when there's a source of natural light. I've always noticed that about bathrooms in houses. Um, a, you know, a bathroom that has a natural window I want to make a little spa in there, you know, and hang out and, you know, have a bath and open the window and you, you can, I, I have like a decorating inspiration and it's a room that I want to be in, but a bathroom with no windows, I don't necessarily want to stay in, you know, it's not as inviting. It changes the whole vibe. You want to get in and out. Yeah, like why am I going to hang out in this room with no windows? <laughs> I designed this inspiring. really cool bathroom in a house once and the roof was actually a, a pyramid, glass pyramid. So the, the whole, in, and then so, you know, and you'd be in there, you know, and it'd be raining and you'd have, you could see the, the, the rain coming down on, on the Oh, that's amazing. I would go that's in insane. there all the time. <laughs> oh, do my work in there, hang out. Well, I did have a TV in there as well. So you could sit there and watch Netflix in the spa. And there was a double spa in there and you could, yeah. That's insane. So. I wish you had pictures of this so we could see it. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds incredible. That that yeah. sounds though like it's like uh, set the stage for a sensory experience, which yeah. is extremely refreshing and relaxing. If you have a, a whole spa set up and you have light and you can have smell and sounds and everything in the one room. Yeah. <laughs> well, another well, thing I was thinking about. Sounds. Go it's ahead. Good you mentioned sounds as well, Heather. Because mm -hmm. we spoke about the light, we spoke about the smells, we spoke mm -hmm. about being outside, but we haven't spoken about sounds yet. That's right. Yeah. Do you listen to music while you work? Yes, oh, I have yes. Uh, binaural beats that I listen to. Yeah. When I work, not uh, when I don't work, I, it's another type of music. But uh, when I try to, when I wake up, I put something else. It's, it depends on the moment of the day. I'll tell you something funny I did with music and work. When I started writing um, <clears throat> and started my writing company, 
like a lot of people, I had in mind this plan that within a very short amount of time I would be working on a beach somewhere. That's no. what I, I thought I would have tons of free time and I would be working on a beach. And, uh, and this is still a possibility, but I don't have a lot of free time. I'm very busy and I am not yet on the beach. So when I'm working, I put on bossa nova jazz. Yeah. with a very tropical vibe and it actually makes me feel like I'm having a little vacation kind of energy around my work. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, a very distant plan B, but mm -hmm. it is it does put me in a good tropical mood. It does feel like a, a little like bit of that energy. Beach. Like you're close to the beach. Yeah, so. I get a, like a little bit of that, just a hint of that. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of sound and music, let me ask you, um, do you guys have a theme song? Yeah. A song that inspires you that you know you connect with? Or am I the only freak that does that? So, <laughs> so I know I, I have one and it's actually as of recent, it's probably within the last few years. It's a song by Delhi and it's called Flowers and it's it's weird. It it feels like you're in like I feel like I'm in like a like a like a a living paradise every time I listen to that song yeah. and it's like I don't know there's something to it like and you know when I'm staring at nature while I'm listening to it like it puts me into a different state of mind no, so but yeah no you it's I think it's very real and I think that that theme song obviously like everything changes with time and so yeah that's like my current theme song right now and it has been for probably the past like two like two years ish yeah. So, oh, flowers? It's called Flowers and it's by Delhi. It's D E L I. Um and or the Delhi. And it's a lyricless song, so it's just it's all beats. You can just listen to it. And I I'm very much going to music. Like I, I love listening to music that especially engages my mind in putting lyrics or putting a voice to the beats that are being played and so i i gravitate towards that music yeah okay oh, i relate to because i put on there's certain music that i'll put on and and around the house and i depending on when i'm working i usually will either have no music so i can really focus because sometimes I, I just need to do that other times i'll have a um hopono hopono music playing because that that's a little bit more relaxing but then other times when i need to be a little bit inspired where i don't need to be as focused or i'm moving around the house I'll have there's some inspiring um, music and uh, certain music that, that does inspire me and I kind of dance around and puts me in a, in a really good mood. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, as I said, I do have a theme song as well and it's from a James Bond movie. So um, <laughs> from the movie, The Spy Who Loved Me, it's Carly, Carly Simon. Um, but not for the reason, the, the main reason that it would stand out. I mean, the songs, obviously nobody does it better, but it's not, um, well, I connect to that. There's there's one line in that song which which is the reason I connect to, which is probably the opposite of, of what it actually sounds like. <laughs> it's the part where she talks about because I'm I'm quite a protective, especially you know when from my family perspective. Certainly when I was married and and certainly with my son, um, and I'm quite protective. And there's, there's one line where she talks about um, or she sings that he's keeping um, all the secrets safe. And to me, I found I really connect to that as a protective dad of um yeah and that's why that song really really inspires me so, okay. a bit that I so if you if one. you put if you put that uh song on what does that do for your mood and your mental sharpness does it change how you uh feel like instantly uh, uh, definitely i mean it has a huge impact on on how i feel about me um it's also it's set as my alarm not that i set an alarm often but when i do set an alarm that's what wakes me up in the mm. morning and um and it just inspires me to, to do a fantastic job um you know do it when I, and it's coming from my perspective of me doing better than myself so um, and, and that's the comparison, not to other people or anything like that, but the comparison of me inspiring me to be better than I was yesterday. So. It's interesting that you mentioned an alarm because I just recently changed my phone's ringtone to a little recording I made of a Kings of Leon song, yeah. which is kind of like my happy weekend decompressing music. Um, I have a lot of positive associations with that. And it, I don't know why it never occurred to me until just recently to change my ringtone from the same boring, like, alarming thing that it's been for years. 
and it has made a huge difference usually <laughs> when my phone rings i get anxiety and i didn't notice <laughs> you know no, i don't right. think we're, we're not always conscious of that little in you know instant reaction that we have but when my right. phone rings i'm like what <laughs> who, who goes there <laughs> what the heck do you want i just feel because in the past it has typically been bad news or you know something to do with work or an issue or a problem it's not usually good if someone's calling i don't spend a lot of time on the phone so just making that change to a positive sound has eliminated that um spontaneous defensive yeah. negative feeling that i have when my phone rings and that's beautiful i wish i had done it earlier What's the same? Like when I set a timer on my phone, I, I have the same. It's the, there's a little, very nice chiming sound, um, rather than that. Yeah, 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 the, 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 yeah. The body uh -huh. You don't want to hear like the dun 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 dun. Like upon waking up, like I, it drove me nuts. I had that that ringtone on for like probably six or seven years. I just couldn't. Yeah. Isn't it isn't it funny how you will put up with that for six years and every time you hate it but you don't change it because it doesn't occur to us sometimes <laughs> to, to take it, yeah. charge and, and the same with our smells or you know how our environment looks or whatever maybe we walk into a room every day and hate how it looks but it's it's sort of unconscious yeah. so it's we'll just keep doing it every day why don't we change it absolutely there are so many things in life that's that happen that way. Yeah. It's not just the alarm clock. It, it happens in so many ways in, in daily life that we just continue doing and we don't change until something just happens. Yeah. Incidents and then we say, oh, why didn't right. I do this before? That's one thing I want to bring up. With, you, know, you mentioned that um, about how we, we just do that as a habit. With regard to staying sharp, one area that I use uh, and to stay motivated is shifting my focus in my mind to, to where my outcome is. Because sometimes, especially, I mean, I find, you know, if you start thinking about the past and, and things like that, that can be quite depressing and you're going, oh, why didn't this happen? Stuff like that. As soon as I find myself doing that, I'll shift my focus to going, okay, what do I choose for me? And what, you know, that, that's what do I want for the future? And all those, as soon as I start focusing on that, there, a lot of troubles just disappear. There's a whole relaxation and calm, but a lot, and there's also a lot more energy that I find that I have. And there's a, just a, a mental shift in my mind. Um, I've even had that experience where I've been feeling unwell and I've shifted and gone, no, I, I feel good. I, um, you know, this is where I'm going and this is all gonna work out. And, and all of a sudden that, physical sickness that I was feeling actually disappears. It's um, been really interesting. I was going to say too, um, we haven't touched on like the aspect of touch either. So like having like things in your, your immediate area, like stress balls or things that you can physically tangibly grab and just like kind of manipulate. Like I, I this sounds goofy, but, and I haven't done this in a while. I like get like gag, like things that like kind of mold and that manipulate. So, you know, it's like, it's, it takes, it takes your mind away from, you know, what it is that, you know, is going on at that, you know, at any given moment, you know, that you need it. And you can just kind of just, you know, like simply just roll it in your hands or, you know, like put it on the ground or press it against things. And it's just, it, I don't know, it, there's something to it. Like, <laughs> and I mean, and I've done that, you know, since I was a kid, I mean, I'm very, like, I need a lot of tangible objects and things that I can kind of play around with. Otherwise, you know, I'm the toe tapper, or the kid who's rolling, you know, around in his seat, so. And don't underestimate the power of a hug either. Like with my son and I, we'll be playing and, and uh, we'll doing something. Then I'll chase him around the house and, you know, we'll have a little bit of a wrestle and, you know, and um, you know, other times we just, you know, if you're walking past and I'll just give him a hug and we both feel great from that. It's just, you know, that, that touch and that connection. Uh, can be really inspiring to, to lift you back up again as well. You're not feeling quite, you know, um, as energized. When we just talked about things that we do by habit, it's, um, it's something completely different. But to me, it's also because sometimes we have these old beliefs that we uh, have in our minds and um, it's because of these old beliefs that we keep on repeating things as well. And sometimes when we take a moment of reflection, 
we can uh, we can question our beliefs if they are still true, if they are still valid, and we can just um, well, it it happens to me once in a while that I just take a moment for myself, um, and then I'm wondering if it's still uh, useful to have a certain belief, if it's still adding value to my life, and this is. Uh, as as useful to me as uh, having a hug with someone or to as everything that we have mentioned until now this is also it's, keeping it's interesting that you mentioned that in me because there are so many beliefs that we have that are actually false and we just take them to be true uh, mm -hmm. an, an example of that one that i grew up with and, and i know a lot of people have heard and you may have heard it yourself is that you know 90 percent of heat goes out through your head or you know some sort of percentage yeah. like that I mean, have you, you've heard that, you know, that, that quote. And but the thing was, if that was true, you'd be able to walk around with just a beanie on and no clothes. But it's not true. <laughs> the, the reality is, is that, you know, given the surface area that's not exposed, um, or the surface area that is, is exposed, the, the heat goes out through your head. That's why they say wear a cap or a beanie. Um, and but we have that belief and we don't question it we just take it to be true and, and what you're saying there enemy is very very true to, to question yeah. those beliefs because a lot of times things that we're taught are actually not not true mm -hmm. and it doesn't keep us mentally sharp because we we focus on the wrong things so that's why I I, I take sometimes this moment just for myself just to reflect on it and then I'm thinking, okay, let me look for the evidence if the belief is still true. You know, if you look for evidence, then you will find, oh, I, I'm, I was just lying to myself, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to replace the old belief with a new one, let's say, to, and then I'm going to try to find the evidence for the new belief to reinforce that new, uh, uh, to reinforce a new uh, belief with the new feelings to, give me new energy and this is where taking that back to what you your outcome is and, and what you, you want for your life being able to I, I like to work in reverse instead of saying you know um, what do I have the ability to do I'm like well what do I want and how am I what do I need to have to get there and mm -hmm. that's where the same with those beliefs sometimes and I've found from my own self-analysis there's things that I wanted to do and, and I was struggling to get there and then I realized it, like you're saying to me that there's a belief that's holding me back as soon as I change that belief things become a lot easier and, and that energy and, and um, inspiration was was a lot more in my life so it made a huge yeah. difference by just questioning mm -hmm. those beliefs like you said it's because it's our environment, but it's the environment, the external environment, but it's also the internal environment, which is our own belief system and our values and, and our purpose, everything which is inside us, which is as well as important as the external environment that stimulates us to, to move on, to be happy, to, to stay mentally sharp. Definitely. So we've covered a lot here. I mean, we've, we've covered, you know, smells, sound, um, colors. Uh, we've talked about beliefs and your focus. It's just, there's so many things that you, I guess that are available to your mobile phone and, and the rings that we talked about. These little things make a difference. I know from my perspective, when I changed my alarm from that, eh, eh, I, I woke up in the morning feeling much more relaxed, you know. Um, initially, I, I had an alarm that was just a gentle music and that was nice to wake up to. You know, this nice, I think I got the inspiration um, from an Eddie Murphy movie. I think it was the one where he's the king on, anyway. And, and, and someone comes in and, and rings the little triangle and, and he slowly wakes up and goes, oh, that's a good idea. So, mm -hmm. but those you things- should hire someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hire like Morgan Freeman to wake you up. Yeah. It's time to, it's like, I can just see it, like him saying like, it's time to wake up darling or something like. <laughs> No, we, and I've heard a couple of Morgan Freeman you know, you know, on YouTube where he's giving inspirational speeches. That would be a really cool way to wake, wake up. With it. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any other areas we, you think we, we could be... I mean, I know from my perspective too, one I'm thinking of is, is being active. Because sometimes, I mean, especially lately, I've been doing a lot of work where I'm sitting down. I do have a sit-stand desk. But it, uh, and I find just that that being active, but other times even being stuck at the desk for a long period of time, just 
moving, even though I'm standing, I'll sometimes just go for a walk around the house, you know, um, and just to, to, um, to wake me up. And, and same token, if I'm out at a client, I'll be working at a desk and I might just go for a walk out in the factory just to, to stimulate the, my mind and see what's going on. So. I was going to yeah. say, um, this brings up something too, and this is where it's a good place to help develop behaviors with healthy snacks having like healthy snacks like readily available in like your workspace or in like the dynamic area so like a bowl of fruit you know is like a prime example like having some bananas you know some apples oranges you know whatever things that obviously don't go bad that you know you can have sitting around that kind of encourages oh you know i i need to get my daily intake of fruit or you know even certain vegetables you can do it with so I mean, just something, you know, to consider too. And like that kind of brings in, you know, a different dynamic into, into the room. That's what I see often when I still work part-time in an office and I see people around 3, 4 p.m. They all rush to the automatic machine and they all look for Coca-Cola and all this sweet uh, stuff because they need this boost. You know, they have this uh, energy. Uh, yeah dip and then they need their boost none of them they go for fruits they all go for the the coca-cola yes for the high sweet uh, stuff right away and um no it's still a mental exercise that has to be done for some people apparently yeah definitely um we're starting to run out of time do you want to give uh, one takeaway or, or several takeaways that, that our audience can follow on from I think mine would be that um, so a lot of the things that we've talked about all do boil down to sensory stimulation of one kind or another, right? And um, if the first step has to be self-awareness, we have to recognize like uh, Jamie and you and Enemy were talking a bit about that self-reflection and self-awareness. We have to recognize how things stimulate our senses and how we appreciate them and how it affects us and pay attention. And then once we've done some of that analysis, we can start to be proactive about bringing those things into our life. So yeah, I, for myself and anyone, I would recommend being more thoughtful about your sensory experiences. And then from there, uh, thoughtful about actively adding and choosing to bring more of that into your life. Very valuable feedback, yes. Any other takeaways? In this, especially in this time of COVID, when everyone is uh, behind doors and walls and, you know, with these masks, all these sensory experiences are lowered, let's say, because people are not allowed to, to interact as before. And um, it's like this being imprisoned for some people, and it's uh, it's really damaging for uh, for health, mental health, physical health. So it's really an important element in uh, to take care of. So if we are not able to to go outside, at least to take care of our internal environment in the house, to to do everything to to stay motivated and happy. Stephen, and then just adding on um, to both of your guys' ideas, um, scheduling sensory breaks. So not just simply, you know, being aware of, you know, having, you know, like sensory need because we all have that. Um, it's at creating opportunities for acting on, you know, these sensory opportunities. Fantastic! What a great information. This has been a very exciting seminar um, show today. So this has uh, been Heather, Enemy, Stephen and myself, Damien Andrews, for Exceptional Effort, Mind and Body. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.